A long time ago, when I was a teenager, I weighed a lot. I was so big that the only shirts that I could wear that were both comfortable and large enough to fit me while having sufficient abdominal coverage throughout the full ranges of human motions were Hawaiian button-ups. My teenage wardrobe was full of them. I was even given the nickname Magnum, short for Magnum P.I., by one of the dorm staff at the therapeutic residential school that I involuntarily attended for 21 months. The school was in Connecticut, not exactly an island paradise with a tropical climate. And not only did I weigh a lot, but I gained that weight over a relatively short period of time. Which brings us to the subject of this video. Why the sudden weight gain, Russell? The answer was psychiatric drugs. I wasn't an overweight kid. I shopped in the husky section throughout my latter elementary school years and at times the adult section, but that was because of height rather than huskiness. But yeah, I admit, I had a little baby fat on me. That Chef Boyardee weight. I had that candy bloat. Enough excess to be a little self-conscious about my weight, but really, that was it. I was on the path to slimdom as my teenage years began, and it was happening through absolutely no effort of my own. I adored the melting away of my baby fat. Seriously, it was like someone was holding a flame to it, denaturing it, and the denatured bits were running down my legs into a puddle on the floor, thus surrounding me in a pool of my own unneeded and unwanted liquefied fat. It was great. I was on my way to becoming a dang man. I don't know. But I do know now that some things were about to change for me then. I had recently turned 15 years old, and I had been taking antidepressants since I was 11 years old to treat the symptoms of obsessive compulsive disorder. The first drug that I was prescribed was Luvox, and later a drug called Surzone took its place. So the baby fat had begun to melt away in spite of taking antidepressants, and I said it felt great, but that was really the only thing good about that time in my life, and that was about to go away. Shortly after I turned 15, two additional psychiatric drugs were added to the rotation. The two psych drugs that were added were the antipsychotic medications Zyprexa and Risperdal. I was prescribed them in an alternating sequence for some reason to treat the worsening symptoms of OCD. It was an hilariously extraordinary experience. Not only was I still taking hour-long soap bar dissolving showers and worrying about how many steps I was taking and where I was taking them, I was now counting the pounds that I was gaining and worrying myself sick over where I was gaining them. And of course, they all went to the belly. So, Teen Russ, after taking Risperdal and Zyprexa, went from weighing 175 pounds to weighing 300 30 pounds in one year's time. Taking those antipsychotics and gaining that weight felt like an assault on my body, my mind, my emotions, my spirit. Now, I wasn't doing well even without the meds. I needed help as an adolescent, as a child as so many do. The psych drugs just made everything worse. They made it impossible to take an accurate inventory of what was wrong, and by extension, how to fix it. And those around me could point to mental illness as the culprit for a child's suffering, rather than the problems in the greater environment and within the household. I know there are a lot of people who have experienced weight gain while taking psychiatric drugs. It is a common side effect. It's something that you come to see as par for the course once you've been given any one or more of a handful of diagnoses and the drugs used to treat them. So it's not just antipsychotics that cause weight gain. SSRIs and psych drugs from other classes can too. Yeah, you can get that Paxil punch. But this doesn't change the fact that experiencing weight gain as a side effect of psychiatric drug use is devastating. You can't prepare yourself for it. To make matters more urgent, especially for the young. According to a research study from 2008, conducted by the National Institutes of Health, titled, Fat Cell Numbers in Teen Years Linger for a Lifetime, our teenage years in particular are a bad time to experience a massive weight gain. Simply put, any additional fat cells that we gain during this time will be sticking with us for the long and in many difficult to prevent cases, heavy haul. The stakes are high. I eventually lost pretty much all of the weight that I had gained in that year while involuntarily attending a therapeutic boarding school in Connecticut for 21 months. I didn't do anything special while I was there. At least, it wasn't special in the sense that I learned and applied some sort of old weight loss secret that few people know about. I ate a little bit less and became active in sports. Plus, I was a teenager. It's much easier to lose any amount of weight when you're a teenager. And the psychiatrist at the school reduced the amount of medication that I was taking. I even got rid of the type 2 diabetes that I had acquired during the weight gain. Fun times. 
If you're taking a psych drug or drugs that cause weight gain, then it's going to be tough. You are likely in the unenviable position of trying to limit the gaining of weight rather than preventing it. And you just have to do your best. I would say be even more vigilant about making good choices day in and day out. But it's tough. It really is. But whatever you do, don't deprive yourself. Remember to live, damn it. Life really is too short. But all of this implies that there are choices to be made, and we are the ones who will make them for ourselves. Adults, with few exceptions, are fully capable and should be allowed to make up their own minds about whether or not it's worth it to them to gain any amount of weight in exchange for any perceived benefits of taking a particular psychiatric drug. But children are not in a position to make this decision for themselves. For better and for worse, it's up to those around them to make the call. Young people are not in a position to bargain with their psychiatrists. Why is bargaining with a psychiatrist even a thing? Even with the help of my mother, with her telling my then psychiatrist that I was suicidal because of the weight gain, it still wasn't enough to change course. I stayed on the drugs and continued gaining weight. And just to be clear, I'm not saying young people should be allowed to make all of their own decisions. Oh my lord, that is not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that our childhood and teenage years, our primary years of development, are difficult enough without anything extra and unnecessary being thrown in, including hundreds of pounds of weight. We need to do better as adults to help young people. The best way for us to take good care of our children is to make sure that we take good care of ourselves as adults. Take a stand for what's important. Set a good example. Let's not routinely drug our adult minds into a waking sleep or to supernatural levels of alertness so that these methods of coping or not coping will then trickle down to our children. Simple stuff, really. Otherwise, what choice do our children have? but to follow in our footsteps. And that will probably not result in them living on an island paradise with a tropical climate, but it might get them into a little therapeutic residential school in Connecticut. Thanks for watching.